In order to deliver the outcomes that a lot of utilities are very, very passionate about delivering, how do you see the interplay of the IT and the OT camps and being able to deliver that? I think historically, the IT and the OT camps operated pretty much uh, autonomous of one another. Um, there was some interaction when it came to back-end systems, but really, for the most part, they sort of stuck to their own knitting. I think what you're, the successful deployments that we've seen have been when you get a broader group of stakeholders at the table. Right now, the decision makers obviously are the OT, right? Um, because they understand the business, they know the vendors that have understanding of their core, uh, their grid, their grid operations. Um, the IT teams don't have that expertise, so they're going to need to come to the table and be prepared to learn a lot and get far more better than they have been in the past. Well, this is where I think uh, technology vendors with deep expertise in these vertical markets have strategic advantage over, if you would, general information technology companies that are used to selling horizontal tools. How do you see uh, the appetite for the adoption of cloud within our utilities? All the data does eventually find its way at an aggregation level to the cloud. So it's right now, uh, at this point in time, it's about two thirds of people are doing the initial analysis and action on premise or near on premise, maybe at an aggregation point like an interconnect or a hoster, and a third of them are doing it in the cloud. Now over time, that's growing considerably uh, year over year in cloud adoption. And we saw that initially with obviously billing and things like that. Utilities were some of the first to move to the cloud for sort of those back office functions. But when you talk about running the business itself, um, I think there's still a little bit of skepticism there. And then obviously there's regulatory and latency and privacy and security hurdles that we're gonna need to work out over time and earn that trust. When it comes to products delivering outcomes, what do you think is the right amount of customization and what's the right amount of productization? Uh, on one end, you have the opportunity to deliver fast time to value, but on the other, uh, you have uh, the, the opportunity to deliver something that is unique to the customer. Is there a proper balance for that? And uh, what are some of the considerations? I think the proper balance for that is, it's threefold. One, obviously as a vendor, you're going to want to deliver as close to that full outcome as possible. Um, it's lower risk for you, it's better value delivered to your client. Um, the clients themselves, at the end of the day, they're running, an, they're running an electric network, right? They're running a grid. They're not in the software development business. Um, this is a tool to help them accomplish what they want to accomplish. So they do need to stretch a little bit and do need to come over and customize for their own environment because they understand it better than anybody. Mm -hmm. And then there's an opportunity for third parties to get in there, and that's partners that might fill in specific technology gaps between what you deliver to the door and then what the customer needs to implement. Or it might be even integration partners that bring all these things together like a master chef and make them work perfectly for that customer. So I think it's going to be a combination of those factors. I think it's probably going to end up being 90% you, 5% partners, 5% customer, because really they're not in the software development business. They're in the running and electric grid business.